green room. All right. Thank y'all for letting me do all that, being patient with me. My name's Mark Connor. I'm from Amy City, Louisiana. Um, I caught my first beaver in probably about 1975, beaver and otter. And we've been lucky to always have a lot of them, no limit, either one. So I've been fortunate to be in a lot of stuff. And, but anyway, I'm going to show you. I'm going to start off just a little bit on the equipment. I don't do a whole lot to my equipment, but I do a little bit. Uh, on a ma I like a magnum trap on beaver or otter, either one, because 95% of the time it doesn't matter, but I don't want 95% of them. I want all of them. And uh, if you got a magnum, it'll hold them by the tail or a foot. And uh, or if you get in muskrats, where that muskrat, he probably he if it hit him way back or got him on the tail in this trap, he'd just swim on through. But that magnum will hold him, or no tree or otter by the tail, something like that. And anyway, uh, and this is something that before I forget it. I highly, highly, highly recommend this safety. I know, I know Minnesota had them in there, and uh, this will fit a 110 or it'll fit that 660. It goes all the way, and I believe in it. I trap by myself a lot, and I ain't got time to get caught. I do, but I ain't got time for it. But it goes over the top when the trap's set. It's standing right up there in your face, and uh, it's very effective. And then as soon as you take it off the trap, hook it on something. Don't lay it on the ground. Hook it on something. That's just a little tip where you won't leave it. But anyway, I highly, highly, highly recommend that. And uh, I want to show you this. See, this is how a lot of them come. That safety is on that low side. Or the safety hook's on the low side. And if you slip it over here on the high side, you take it over and you can just drop it right in that eye and it'll be out of your way. And that way it won't hang when that trap fires. And once in a while, one will hang. That's just a little tip. And this... This is another tip. Uh, it's not a big problem nowadays, but a long time ago on the older traps, they would have a gap in the spring right here, some of them. And sometimes that spring would jump off the trap. You can take that cable clamp and just slide it down here like this and cover that gap. And you can also take the dog off of a, this piece right here without the trigger and slide it down over there and cover that gap. Don't think it won't jump off there because it will. And it'll be at a bad time too. Anyway, I just want to show you that. And uh, when I'm uh, when I'm after otter, I'll, I'll explain this rig in a minute. I like a big trigger, like a circle trigger. That's 22 inches of old phone wire, and I make it in a circle, and I squeeze it in a little farther than you think for that otter. Because uh, otter, he's pretty good about slipping by something like this. But I, I like a longer trigger. And when I, when I, I don't, that factory chain, I don't like it. We had a uh, otter last year break a factory train on a 280 bridge, or brand new trap, first time it was set. I guess I got a bad hit on him and he broke that chain and we lost him. But anyway, I use a heavy chain, I think about six or seven inches straight, straight loop chain and loop, and loop it around the eye. Then I use an MB swivel. There's no reason to use a cheap swivel. Won't save you a dime a piece. And I'm going to use two links of heavy dog chain, and I do still use a split ring. And that split ring, on my cables I use, I like one eighth. Don't worry about it. I got two loops on in, I cut them 10 feet, put it around something, and just hook it into the split ring. And this is, uh, we got a lot of bears at home and a lot of alligators, and they're bad about trying to steal your beaver. And usually if you use heavy cable, they'll just get the critter and won't get you trapped. And it's also, it's just a lot easier on your hands and your gloves when you go to a heavier cable. Not as bad about cutting in on you. And uh, if, if this trap, if this traps that I get, if they're not a magnet or if they are like a, a Duke, thank you, a Duke Magnum or the old BMI, they came with this regular trigger on them where a Belial has got this flat trigger or flat dog on it where to close all the way. And again, it doesn't matter 95% of the time, it'll leave a gap right here when it's closed. So I'll have to replace this trigger with a Belial type and I'll take and, and pound that jaw shut and take that gap out where you just get that extra one or two critters. But anyway, it's, it, it may not, it, it does make a difference. I've seen it happen. 
Uh, and once again, I, I really, really believe in that safety. Uh, and I do use, uh, I mainly use 330s, but I do, I use, I use quite a lot of 280s too, especially when I'm after otter. And the big beaver, they will go through a 280. I think if they're square shy, they're square shy. And uh, it gets a good hit on them. And uh, don't, be, don't be afraid to use them, especially if you're in the otter. And uh, my, for my, my favorite snare, this is one by 19 cable, 564, and it's loaded. You got a slim lock, and right behind the loop, we put a uh, heavy barrel swivel. Swivel on the end is useless. First thing you'll do is wrap around a bush, and this swivel is done. But this one, you'll get some good out of it. And uh, I usually run about a nine inch loop. Something like that, I don't really measure it. And, and I know for, I know some of this stuff's probably not legal in Oklahoma, but maybe you can modify it to where it will be legal or you might be trapping somewhere else. But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and show you this stuff anyway. And uh, when you're running a snare, if you're on dry ground, that's probably about right. Maybe, maybe a little higher, about two or three fingers, maybe two or three inches off the ground. And um, put it right dead center of the trail and then leave it alone. And uh, if you're, if you're, if you're uh, snaring on an incline, you need to match, you need to cant that snare to match the incline of the hill. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. If you're, you need to cant it, because if, you, if you're like this and he's, he's coming at the incline, he'll just run over the top of it. But, and then the, on the snare also, sometimes you have to, that look probably about right, but sometimes, you know, that beaver might weigh six or seven pounds, or he might weigh 75. So sometimes if you hit him knocked down, you have to play with them. And I don't put just one in a trail, I put two or three if I got room, but sometimes you just have to play with it. Don't be afraid to. And uh, I'm not sure where the lock goes, probably back a little bit, depending on how the wind's blowing. But sometimes you just have to play with a loop. That's kind of hard to do because it's loaded so fast but sometimes you just have to play with a loop. And uh, when I set a lot of snares on a new job, I like to, uh, I like to put extras and also put dog proofs or something to keep the coons whooped down off of me too, so if you've about got to catch them. And uh, kind of use a little self-defense. Kind of like cat trapping, you need to have something to kind of maybe thin the stuff down before you get to it. I always use mainly what's handy at the set to just use for my snare support. But a friend of mine in East Texas made these, and I about changed my mind. This is angle iron, but it's aluminum. And he gave me a bunch of them, and they stack real good, and they carry real easy. And if you put that in the ground, it doesn't spin. You put it in the ground, and it is solid, and we painted them. But uh, that, that's, that's a real good deal. And he's run it, drill two holes, and he run it through there, where he's got two contact points, and it's real stable. But, Anyway, I, I never worried about carrying. What now? Port water. What, yeah, that's that's a, I really like. That's nine. I really like the eleven because we're set up with a small support, but the nine is probably better actually because it's heavier. But just whatever, eleven or nine, either one. But I, I do like a support collar, and if you if your support, support collar tears up or you haven't got one, I like just black electrical tape, and you need to use good electrical tape. If you use the cheap crap, about one or two rains, and it'll fall. Or you can just take a little bitty zip tie, and uh, or you can bend the wire and make you a W and put it in there. But I like to I like a support collar. To, anyway, um, on the footholes, I, I don't drown a lot of beaver. I don't like to fool with it. And then, and a lot of the reservoirs in the delta, there's a lot of stuff on the bottom, and it's it's hard. To, a lot of time they'll get tangled up, and you won't get you trapped in the beaver back. But uh, I use a lot of number three bridgers, and this has got a six and a half inch jaw spread. Is Dale Billingsley called it a tall jaw spread at six and a half up and down. And that's the one time when you want to, you know, a cat or coach, you want to catch just a foot, but that's one time when you're trapping beaver and holding them alive, you want to get him up high. And uh, the trick to this is you use about four or five pounds of pan pressure because you either want to get him good or miss him completely. You don't want to get a toe and you don't want to smarten him up. And uh, there, that joint on a beaver or a rat, it's really weak right here. You don't want to get him right there. He may not be there unless you drown him. But uh, 
anyway, it, when I do drown one, I like either a TS-85 or I like the old long spring. This is a Blake and Lamb 44. It's just like a number five Bridger, seven and a half inch jaw spread. And I like the Posi Trip pan on it, which is just a, a pan system where you can put pressure on it and control the pressure. And I run about five on these. And uh, I run a heavy chain. I got three MB swivels on it. Don't don't run anything without good swivels on it. And like I say, I don't use a cheap swivel. I use the good ones. But and uh, I'll show y'all that in a minute. And uh, here's another little deal that I like to use in the rocks or on like in a concrete culvert. It's a KB stabilizer. It's a stand, and this will fit most about any size kind of bear. And you just it just sets down. I hope y'all see this. It just sets. It's kind of self-supporting. And I put the put spring eye down. You see, it's fairly stable like that. But uh, when I run a lot of harder, we have rip wrapping stuff. Where it's coming up, I kind of make me build up a little on either side and put that in there, and then put rocks on the springs. And uh, it's pretty, it's a pretty good deal. And then this one is the same thing, but I took a small railroad tie plate and wired it to it and it is extra solid when you get that extra weight and especially if there's a little skim of mud or something it'll just it'll drop right down in there and just stay seated and this will fit a 220 or about whatever you got and the, you need to you see i've got wire looped around it you need to wire that to your trap because i don't know how they do it but a beaver or otter can lose every one of them you can put out there without a wire on it that's a good set like saying concrete or rocks or Whatever, I better leave that on there. I started wiring my traps down. I had a guy come up about three demos ago when I was holding it like that. He said, is that the trigger? And how I kept him from getting caught. So that's why I started wiring everything down, keeping it safe. Oh, I want to show you one thing more on snares. You can block the trail down for a snare if it's wide, but the more blocking you use, them. So what I do on a wide trail, and, and you're not going to catch a double probably with them set like this, but if you're after a certain beaver, it's worthwhile just to kind of set two. What I'll do is I'll put a stake or I'll put a stick right in the middle of the trail and split them, and that way. You know, you haven't got any, you ain't got anything with this one. You ain't got a whole bunch of blocking to spook him. If that trail's already wide, I don't like to block down. I like to keep everything as natural as possible. I, I don't do a lot of fur trapping. I'm mainly an ADC trapper, so a lot of times I'm after just one that's already smart. So I tend to be very careful about leaving sign and choking trails down and stuff like that. But that's just a little tip. Just split the trail and use an extra snare. and. I'm not a real big user of lure. I don't see any sense in it when there's a good blind set, but somebody always asks me, so this is my favorite. It's called Sweetwater Flat Tail, and uh, uh, they got it in Minnesota, and I think Galen's got it too, but uh, I think it's made out of Wyoming, but this is also a real good cat lure. Rub lure, and it's also good for a coyote down the dirt hole. Just don't get in over the set pattern because you'll make them roll when you get caster on the ground. But that's that's a real good lure. Bob Wilson Green, uh, um, Minnesota Trap Line's got good lure. Bounty Bee or Dam a Dam, and uh, the, I think they call it Bounty Beaver for summer. Good lure, but I don't use a whole lot. Uh, but somebody always asks me, like say, what, I use cable extensions one eight. And I do believe, I know some people don't use them, but I got spoiled on them. I do use eight stands at every set nearly, 280, 330, whatever. I, I really like them. And I like these, the double bar, this one will go in the mud, and this one's got a wide enough gap where you can put your boot toe in it and push it down. Right, you know, I don't, I don't really like the single bar, plus they're bad about breaking, because you get, they, they, take a, they take a pretty bad beating. And that fell on my toe, I guess I'm supposed to show you that. This is another trick we use in a, I hope you can see it, in a corrugated culvert. This is a beam clamp like they use in this type of stuff. 
and uh, it's been drilled where we put a support wire in it, and then this this is how you tie it off this thing. And the snare shops sell these already rigged up, or you can buy them at an industrial supply. But this just clamps onto the culvert, like this is the culvert. You clamp it on here and put your, you know, or where you have to, to support for your snare. And this will hold, if, like I say, if it's a rippled cover, a corrugated cover, if you get this clamp behind one of those ripples. But I will admit, if I've got something handy, I'm going to tie it off over here. Plus, I want it, when that beaver gets in there, I want him to get over here out of the way so he won't be blocking the culvert. But that's just real simple. If you want to look at it, just holler. Just another little trick somebody showed me. Here's a... Uh, well, I'll show that later. Question. Lay it on me. Those little stands that you put the tonic berries on, the little flap stands. The what now? The little flap stands that you put yeah. the tonic berries on. How do you wire them to the track? Just wire them to a spring. Like with what kind of, do you use cable or do you use... No, nah, it's just 16 gauge wire. wire. It, it doesn't take much, just... That's just so you won't lose your stand. Yeah, I almost lost them several times. Yeah, and I just put, I don't know, two or three foot on there, and it doesn't take a whole lot, but that's just like those little wooden spear type. Man, they'll be gone too if you don't wire them. But. And I don't use a whole lot of these. It's kind of a situation deal, but where you need them, man, they ain't, you know, ain't nothing else hardly. They're, they're, they're a good way to go, and they're quick. Also, you said on the swivel, you said you don't use the cheap ones. No. What's the difference between the good one and the cheap one? MB is just a lot heavier. Go over or go somewhere and look at one like on a on a factory trap or a smaller one. The walls are a lot thinner. Oh, okay. And then that that J hook is six gauge heavy duty, so I use them. And uh, about ten cents higher. Yeah, yeah. I don't. And no, plus, when I put a trap together, I like to do it one time, so I, I use them heavy. I, I set everything. And I, tie, I use heavy cable, heavy chain to hold a live animal, which is 90% of the time he's dead, but if, I, want, I want that 1% or two that, that you can't hold. And, and uh, they, they do roll some, you know, so anyway. That's just something I do. Like I say, I'm a, I go after one that somebody's already smartened up a lot of times, so I, I don't want to take no chances on losing him. You know, I want to want to get him, but anyway, it's just something I do, it's up to you, but and I, I say I don't like factory chain because I've seen it fail, and uh, we lost an otter this year, and I hated that man. I hated that, that the otter got away worse, and I hated losing the equipment and stuff because I just didn't do my job. You know what I mean? Just didn't, just don't like letting animals get away. But Mark, when you're going after a smart beaver, are you normally using snares on smart beaver? Snare or foothold? Yeah, right. Uh, and I. Sometimes I have seen them on three different times. It gets smart to a snare, and then you got to foothold them. Yep. I'll, I'll go into that here in just a little bit. Well, I'll, I'll go ahead. This a lot of times what I'll do when you got when you got a smart beaver is, uh, and people will tell you they hadn't been messed with, and when you get in there, it's obvious. About two nights they've been messed with. What, what I'll do sometimes, especially if you know you're down to one, I'll pick me out a spot or two for a blind set for a foothold. And then I'll leave, and then I'll wait. I mean, if you can, if you're in that area, and uh, then I'll wait for a cold front or a rain front or both to come in. And right before that front, I'll slip back in there, and I mean slip back in there, and make don't don't put ten sets out, make one or two, and slip in there and set them, and then get out. And a lot of times I'll even if you're at my set, I'll get in the water if I can and wade over to it. And because uh, especially like in a farm pond, that beaver knows every leaf, he knows every stick, and he knows every smell in there, and he's going to be alert, he's going to know you're there. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and I don't hardly ever set a den. Sometimes you got to, but if you're going to set a, now if you're fur trapping and you see a den on the river, yeah, set, set the holes you can reach and whack a few, and that's with anything, and then go on. But if you're going to set a den, that's another good time right before cold or a big rain. You slip in there and set the den. And usually they'll come out during or after that front to remark their territory and to start round. But I don't I don't like to fool with a den if I don't have to. I don't I don't hardly do it. But beaver. Well, I I've seen them spring conner bears with sticks, and it wasn't by the dam, it was out in a the run. They went and got that stick and sprung that conner bear. I've seen them three different locations to do that 
And the first time I reset the traps two more times because I just couldn't believe it. And they, they, they sprung those traps purposely, but they'd been messed with. But anyway, if you fur trap and just put you some lured sets in and whack a few of the dumb ones and go. The only exception is otter. You need to leave those traps there for a while for otter once you get the beaver knocked down. But anyway, uh, let's see. If you are after otter, what's the, what's the length, good length of time to go and leave them, stay there and work? If I'm driving by there, I'll leave one a couple of months because they'll stir every time it comes a front. And they, that otter might be next county, literally. And, and then don't put one trap, put three or four because you know, they'll they come through in groups. And then I've seen sign in the mud where when you hit an otter, the others will, they'll circle. I mean, I've caught otter in a coyote set or a cat set yeah. a half mile from the nearest water. Yeah, they travel over ground and I don't guess nothing to jump on one of them, I wouldn't. I mean, they don't feel, I don't think they're scared to get out. They want to stay in the water, but they're not scared to cut across. And, and it, cat set, you were sure upset. Yeah, yeah, they're mean, they're mean. Favorite one. Um, <laughs> I want to show you another little trick and people, I know we're taught not to step over the job, not to get the critter to step over the job, but I have not had any trouble with this. This is just a little, little spider looking deal that a guy made me and it goes right here beside the springs. And this one is set for number three Bridger. And what that does, if you've got a, uh, a spot where they're climbing up this kind of steep or you got real, real bad mud, this goes in, I hope you can see it. Like this is this is the water and this is the bank. This goes into the bank right here and holds that, kind of like a little shelf. Does that make sense? And he steps over the jaw, but I have not had any trouble catching him because, and, and, and I run pretty good pan pressure. You want him solid, but I haven't had any trouble with that. Maybe it'll go. Is this the water and the Yeah, either one. Yeah, baby. baby. It goes right there. Yeah. You see, does that make sense? If you don't, it's hard at me, because anyway, it's, it's real simple. Yeah, yeah. I guess you could set it either way, but, well, no, actually, yeah. I don't know, that's the way I set them. I ain't had any trouble. And I don't think he could hardly get under to flip it, because, well, they ain't gonna do that anyway, not messing with a coon or something, but anyway. There's a certain place I, that I do some control work on beaver and otter and get slew. Well, they went in this slough and basically done it, feeds the track hole will release. So, oh, I don't know about that. You are not going to get off in there and get yeah. your shelf and all this and that. And that seems like a place. That's another one. I don't carry these with me, but if I see it, I think, okay. And then, uh, you know. Oh, well, I don't yeah. That's a, it's just a little. Matter of fact, you can have that if you want it. I've got a dozen. No, I don't use them. Okay. I, I don't use many, but I, like I say, it's a situation set like everything else. Um, I, I do have some foothold sets because I know y'all can use them in Oklahoma. I still got time. This is something I want to show you. And you, I, I came up with this when otter were real high, and I had a narrow spot set. And I had it, I had a trap down in this narrow spot, had it brushed over, and I saw an otter. I pulled up and saw him. He headed for my trap, and I was waiting to make that $100. And about a minute, he come up on the other side, and looked back at me, and kept on around. He went over the, he went over the trap and in between the brush, apparently. So, and let me, let me show you. I mean, we've got a lot of runs, too, that connect two bodies of water. And after a few years, they end up that deep. You know, and usually that otter will stay on the bottom, but, or beaver, but otter, you never know. So, and this is not going to do too good, but maybe I can do this. This is my regular setup with a tall stand, and the bottom would be right here. Now, let me show if I can say this a little better. Say this, this gap between my legs is the hole. Here's the water level, or the bank. Well, here's the trap on the bottom. You see there, and you still got this where that otter could go over it. And you, so now, this is just wire that I had. So now, you ram that in there. And you can laugh if you want to, but I've caught hundreds of them like this. And that's just wire that I had and go down just about to the top of the trap. 
and I didn't worry about painting it or I have before. It's, it's a dull color, but uh, that'll keep him keep him down. And of course, that, that trap will be right there on the bottom, but that this is a real good set to put out right for a big rain too when you know that water's coming up. Slap it down in that deep run, cover it up, and wait. They'll still use that run even when the water's way up. But does, it, does that make sense? Just keeping him, keeping him on the bottom? Okay. And uh, yeah, if it's underwater, I put it on, I put the trigger on top with it running down. If I'm setting one that's out of the water and half and half, I want it on the bottom. And if I'm setting a caster mount, I cut it real short or bend them over where they don't see anything but that opening. I would bend these either way over or down. And then if this was the water level, that trap would be about, come on baby. You know, something like that, where he won't see anything, you know, he won't see anything but the, but the opening. Yeah, and then that, that breasts him pretty good usually. And if I cut the trigger off, I, I leave him, leave him a little bit, leave a little bit sharp where it'll hang that, you know, hang that fur too, I think helps a little bit. But that's the way I run them, and I, and I do like a long trigger. And, I, and I think sometimes maybe they even, when they see that hole, they tend to go towards that hole because that's what they're used to doing. They're going in holes all the time, beaver and otter both. So if they see that circle, you're giving them the hole. That makes sense? Yeah. And, I, and another thing I do, I bend one wire back and one forward, and I still keep my same hole, but an otter, I, I don't know, that's just the way I do it. I think, I think maybe when they're doing like that, maybe that spreading that trigger gets you a little more coverage. And I want to show you this. This is a 660, which is just a, it's the 330 that's been widened. They put a, they cut the jaws and then put this pipe in there to widen it. And this is to cover, cover a wide run. And I also like to use it in the summer. If you can run it like this, you can let a lot of turtles and little fish and stuff will go up under here and not get hit. See what I'm saying? All this. And, uh, if you usually, I would run the trigger on the bottom if I wanted to catch in the winter and just let them go over the top of it, just kind of like that caster mount. And this is a stand that we made for it. They're hard to stabilize. We took a 330 stand and cut it. And then I, I took this, this was plat stock we scrounged and just put it in there to match it up and make it fit. This one hadn't been used, I guess. But anyway, it goes on that. The tighter they are, the better. And then just like the big ones, but and that and that flat stock is really good on the bottom. That'll really make them stable when that hits the mud. And uh, this will keep it from getting up into your trap, the double bar. And that's really, really solid. That's a good trap to block off, block off a, a three or four foot run or. Just drop it in there and put a stick on either side. And uh, the less you block down, the less chance you have of spooking them. When I'm, when I'm blocking down, I don't like to do it. When I'm blocking a run down, I don't like to, if this was the run, I don't like to put a solid fence straight out. That'll work. But I like to put like a lay a long limb down here and gradually gradually narrow them down. I don't think, I think they are less spooky. If you try to choke them down all at once, and I also like, uh, I'll put a dive pole over the top of it, and I even like to use, if the run allows, I like to use two or three dive poles. That'll help when that beaver or otter swimming through there, it'll help break up the top of that trap that's out of water. You, get, you gotta remember when you're, when you're using dive poles or whatever, or camouflage, you're looking at it down here. That beaver's eyes down here about two inches above the water. So if he's swimming down, he's looking down here, and you're looking at it from up here. So that's something you need to think about. Does that make sense? Put a pole right over the top of the trap and then one or two, or one on either side, or brush top, just make him make him die. You still put a dive pole and one's got the hardware clock on the trap? Only if the water is gonna 
I know the water's gonna come up real high if I'm not, I'll go ahead and put one, but usually you don't need it, especially tied against the bank or a deep run. But uh, that, that's where like, I use most of them either in that situation or like when, when those runs get walled out and they're connected two bodies of water and drop them down in there. And uh, I, I use a lot of tall stands and they, and they hold good too, you know, they hold in the mud good. I want to show you, uh, okay, this is not a turtle shell, it's a caster mound. <laughs> so I, I run some caster mounds and uh, like I say, I'm, if I'm fur trapping, I'll use lure, but I use a lot of sets with no lure and uh, get their curiosity working. But anyway, you can set an existing caster mound up blind if it's a good one. Right, because like again, a front, right before that front or right after, they're going to come remark their territory. Or you can take this caster mound, if it's sitting there and right over here is a better place to narrow them down, just take that caster mound and move it. And you, that'll get his attention. And you don't have to have any lure. Or you can take that caster mound and just kick the top off of it and scatter it around and get his attention. And, uh, that worked pretty good. You can even take, uh, sometimes you'll see a, a stump with three or four inches sticking out of the water. And it has to be on location, of course, or the end of a log will be right out in the open and they'll use, they'll put caster on those sometimes. And you can take that caster mound and set it on the end of that log. I'm sorry, buddy, come on. Take it off the bank and set it over here and then set your foot over track. And I'm not shy about using two. And I don't use any lure, just use whatever was already on there. Just take it over and set it on the end of that log right up there in the water. And the water can be three or four inches deep or a foot, you know. Put you one, one on either side and run them in different directions. And that, that'll get his attention. But, uh, and if it's established cast amount, he's coming to it anyway. Now, if, if he's, out, he's out there and you've got to draw him in, use a little lure. But I, I don't I don't use a whole lot of lure. I just I just don't think it's necessary. And it's tend to spook them. Now one one lure that I u do use a little bit and I'll show you a couple of sets is is beaver cycle. And uh one one set that I use I want to show you is I hope y'all can see this. Well I'll just come out here. You pick you out, and like I say, you want it right on location, like with everything, right, right beside the water, or where they're coming up. Put your trap. Make you a little light trail, just a couple of hand, hand swipes trail. I don't like a whole lot. Just kind of, you know, like I say, just a little curious. Not really, and you're dealing with a baby, like I say, that might have been messed with. Make you a couple of little slides. Bed your trap back here. And then put one drop of track cycle on either side. And if I'm going to use guiding, I use very little guiding. I call it a suggestion. Just a little weed on either side. And uh, like I say, the main trick to this is use four or five pounds of pan pressure. And uh, and then, and I use ten foot of cable if there's not a lot of entanglement. But three or four foot of chain is plenty to hold them alive too. And when you're holding them alive, you need to put it where he can get on the bank or in the water, either one. They seem to fight it less where they can, you know, a lot of them be just sitting up on the bank asleep or just sitting there. But you need to put it where they can get on the bank and in the water both if you can. Mark, Mark, you're down there at the pasture, you told me that little pig. You still doing that? The damn brake set? No, that little pigs, you know, you. To, Thank you, your oh, breasting him? Yeah. yeah, you wouldn't need it on that. On a like if he's sitting. A, what he's talking about is when a beaver, when a beaver swims up, like when he's fixing to get him out of the water, he'll swim up, and when that bank hits him, they call it breasting. It'll hit him, and then he'll put his feet down. Or what you can do right on the bank side of your trap is put what we call breast sticks. Stick them in where they be up here, where it'll poke him in the chest right before you trap, as soon as he hits him, he'll put his foot down. Um, and I, would, I wanted this table. You can also use dirt to do that. 
Oh, I hope you don't see this. I don't know if you see it or not. Anyway, kind of make a, uh, if this was a bank, get your trap down in here and use a hump of dirt to breast him instead of the sticks. He'll come up and hit here and then you'll drop his foot over that. Can you see that or does that make sense? Get your hole dug down in here. Get your trap down in there and he'll breast when he comes in this way. That, that thing of dirt will breast him and he'll drop his foot in there. That makes sense? Oh, I want to show you another one. This, and you, if you want to drown him, use a big trap. If not, you hold him alive. This, you, if you've got a, a stump like this, where he's coming by, right on location, even an old one, you can, you can take and trim that up or get you a handful of chips, fresh chips off something else and scatter you a few fresh chips like chewings down there beside that. Slick this up a little bit, make it look fresh. And again, if I'm going to use any lure, I'll use one, one or two drops of sack oil. And just bed your trap here. And sometimes this trap will be two or three feet from it where he's coming up on the bank. Make you a little frail down up to the tree. Slick this up, skin it up with your machete or hatchet or whatever, make it look fresh. Drop a few trips out, tri uh, chips out there and then bed your trap back here where he's coming out. And uh, he probably cut that, but when he sees that, he thinks somebody else come in on his territory. And then he smells that sack and he'll come investigate it. And you can take and cut you one and move it where you want it, you know. But anyway, that looks simple and that's what it is. It's simple and uh, that's the best kind, it's simple. I want to show you another foothold. I use like... Get out of here. This said I use some on a smart beaver or like on the side of the road at a on a road job where you've got to hide him. Dam brake set. And uh know where I'm gonna do this at. Anyway, what we'll use this is the dam. A uh, couple of tricks of this set is you don't want a big wide hole. You don't want it deep because you don't want him coming up there with a big stick or something. You just get your boot and make you a hole in the dam just about that wide and get it gurgling good and moving a little bit where you can hear it. And then you drop back. And sometimes, depending on the water level, that strap's nearly just about, it's not just about straight down. And this is how far back I set the trap from the brake. It's right here, from here to here probably about 18 inches. And you come back from the break. You can offset it just a little bit if you want to, just a little bit, and drop that in there. And another trick to it, if you get a couple of sticks, it needs to be something pretty good size, about like these screwdrivers, the end of the screwdriver. And you put one, let it stick up, I don't know, two or three inches. That helps stabilize your trap. Plus, what that beaver will be doing when he comes in there, he'll be down here and he'll be bulldozing with his nose, just like a hog. He'll come up here. He's going to push mud and stuff up in that, in that break, and this will stop him. And then he'll come around, and when he starts to fix that break, he'll square up, and then he'll drop that foot down. Now, this trap wouldn't be way up here. It'd be down about a foot, probably. The toughest place to set this is when the water is shallow, real shallow. And when the water's real shallow, a lot of times I'll use two. You know, if it's shallow out to here and you got a shallow approach, maybe I'd put two traps here and back them up just a little bit. But usually it's just about this far back. This is a really good set. I hope that makes sense. I, I need a little better, but offset it just a little bit and back it up that far and put your, put your blocks here. And this also helps keep his tail out of the trap when he's settling back down. And use, once again, use about five pounds of pan pressure because you, and then you need a big trap on this because you're trying to get his back foot and the beaver's back foot's about like that.
Does that make sense? Or on camera? This, this is a real good set. And, and this is one time I do drown them. I usually use a cable and a center block or a, an old brake road or something pretty heavy, 30, 40 pounds. Because I don't want him sitting up on the bank and maybe twist it out. I want him down the wire. Uh, another set. I don't set every hole that I see, even for otter. I used to, but I don't set holes anymore unless they go somewhere. And uh, one of the best is if you've got a hole through the bank connecting two bodies of water. And if you do that, you need to set it and you need to set both ends and use several feet of cable if you can, where when he hits, he comes out of that hole and gets hit, he'll hit, hit and fall down and get out of your way. And don't be blocking that run. Oh, another thing I want to mention, you see how he cut this stick off? He cut it off a foot or so above the ground. When you're tying off, you need to tie off right down at the ground. So that way if you, beaver, if this was a live tree, if a beaver cut it off, even if he cut it off down here, you're still okay because you're tied off down here. If you just throw it around right here, he'll cut it off. You ain't got anything. And if you're snaring or trapping in the water where you are hold that beaver alive, you need to tie it off below the water level because I have had them chew off up above. You know, they're bad about chewing stuff anyway when they're caught. So tie it off below or right, a, right at the ground level on ground. Another thing I want to show you is when you're tying off, we have a lot of water fluctuations at home. When you're tying off, you need to tie off downstream from the trap. Like if this, this was a set, the current's coming this way, and you tie off upstream, when that water comes up, your cable's out here, and it's gonna start collecting trash. Next thing you know, that's drifted over and all that jumped right in front of your trap. And even if it doesn't spring it, you're still probably out of business because all that crap's right in front of your trap. Limbs and leaves and stuff. If you tie it off down here, you know, that'll help alleviate that problem. And a lot of times, sometimes you have to do what you got to do, but if you can, tie it off down here, downstream from it, where you won't have that fouling up your trap. Another, another trick, we trap a lot of reservoirs and, and levees and stuff. And uh, when you're scouting it or when you're running, it pays to go a different direction because if you're riding down a levee or a road and you're looking for trails, if that trail's 45 like this, you're going to see it. If that trail's 45 back this way and you're riding this way, you're going to miss it. So if you can, mix it up sometimes and scout it or run it in a different direction, you'll pick up those some of those trails that you didn't see. And another thing, when I'm running traps, I like to run them, if I can, at a different time of the day. And the reason being, 6 o'clock in the morning, you won't have much sun. And at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, you might be walking by and you'll see a run or a hole down in the bottom when that sun's shining on it. It's just another way to pick up and find those locations. That makes sense. If you can, sometimes you got to do what you got to do, but if you can mix it up a little bit, it'll help you find stuff like that. I'll have to get over here in a minute. I know I forgot some stuff. And uh, another good blind set, of course, is just where they're, wherever they're coming up on the bank naturally. And uh, if you get down and you feel, you feel where they're coming up on the bank, you can feel a notch or a little slick spot where they're where they're coming up when they're when they're shoving off they'll have a little little notch wallered out that's where you want your trap and once they get smarter blind sets probably about the only thing or underwater snare any questions i know i gotta go here in just a minute let mitchell get out here yeah i'm about out of time sorry about the notes i just try not to forget too much Mark on your dry lung snares there. What are you, about nine inches to two off the ground? Yes. Got you got there, yeah, something like that. And like I say, sometimes if you, you got a little, you, sometimes you have to mix it up a little bit if you're missing or whatever. Yeah, probably about like that, two or three. If it's level, if it, like I say, if you're inclined, can it to whatever incline you're doing. 
and put two or three. Yeah, that's probably about right. And then, of course, you'd block it down as, as little as blocking as possible. Usually, they don't get smart to a sales snare. I have seen it, but not much. I think three different times. Oh, and another thing. They'll get trap shy. Well, sometimes they're just shy of the location instead of the trap. But if you see one, I've actually caught like a conner bear here, and the beaver will actually go around it. I've actually caught them right off the spring in the snare right here. So if something gets wise to your location and starts going around you, don't move that trap because there might be a two-year-old coming from the next colony or otter or whatever, but always add another one. And uh, I've seen an otter in the mud one time. The water fell down his slick, that little slick thing, and he came up. I'd caught two or three. I had another one down there about 20 feet. That otter come up to that trap, went around it in the mud, jumped back in the run, and then got hammered in the exact same type set down there about 20 foot. So he wasn't trap shy. He was scared of that location. But I still wouldn't move that trap because, like I say, another one might come in or whatever, but just add, add to it. And then sometimes on a dam, you can go to the side of the run they're spooked in and just kind of rearrange the brush a little bit and drop you one in there and, uh, and pick those extras up. And I know I've, I've got to get out of here. I don't want to run over, but thank you all for listening. I hope, hope you learned something anyway.